name is Philip. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm from this great company called Exponia, and I'm going to tell you a story. Uh, so there was this company, and uh, it had some great growth. Uh, that's basically a dream, right, for every company. Uh, and one of the reasons why they were, they were able to achieve this growth was because they were moving fast and they were breaking things. And of course, this philosophy made their customers very happy. So cl clearly something had to change. And things did change. Uh, so their motto changed to move fast with stable infra, right? What, what was the effect of that? Uh, so investors loved it and they were swimming in money. So, so that was my story. Uh, so any analogy to our company or, or yours is purely coincidental. But let's talk about stability, right? Uh, and what, what it means. So first I'm gonna talk about stability, what kind of problems there are and how you can solve them. Mm. But then in the second part, I'll talk about how you can actually implement as a company, how you can implement those solutions and also some myths around stability. So what is stability in the first place? Uh, how can we define it? It's, it's kind of hard. Think about it for a second. Uh, so basically, stability is when you have no, no disruption, no, no errors. Uh, you have no incidents. There's no frustration from, from customers. But uh, what it is, you cannot define something as an absence. Of, uh, you see signs. You see downtime, data loss, uh, uh, maybe uh, your costs increase. You have security breaches. Uh, uh, but definitely, customers will let you know if they feel that your service is unstable. Uh, so you are looking for an equilibrium, something stable, but not just any equilibrium, something that uh, is resilient to those negative changes. Uh, so really think about stability as your company uh, resisting all those things that are coming from the outside. So what are, what are the threats specifically? Uh, so it's Black Friday. Uh, all those customers come to your site and uh, it's text about the capacity. So what happens? Uh, there's slowness, there's downtime. Uh, so what can we do to fight this? Uh, so we engineers, we build scalable systems. So we, we make efficient algorithms. Uh, we use better hardware, more hardware. Uh, we implement dynamic scaling. Uh, we set up monitoring alerting. Uh, we do capacity planning. So we do all these things, our system scale, and we are prepared to, to phase the load on Black Friday. So what happens next? Uh, some, some women in Armenia cuts off half the internet, uh, or maybe a, a data center goes down in Google. Uh, you cannot really avoid uh, faults, uh, but you need to be prepared for them. Uh, Again, their impact can be downtime, can be race conditions, can be data corruption. Uh, but what you do is you build fault toler tolerant systems. So you implement some redundancy, failover, high availability. Uh, again, you set up monitoring or alerting. Uh, you use transactional systems. Uh, you implement good exception handling. You make backups. Right? All these things ultimately help you uh, prevent problems from these faults. Anything else can go wrong? Of course. Uh, so maintenance is a huge thing. Uh, um, you, you have this, I'm sure everyone has seen this at least once. A colleague submits uh, and deploys on Friday, then goes off to vacation. Uh, sometimes you can be your own worst enemy. Uh, 
anyway, maintenance of system needs to happen and it's a big source of instabilities. Uh, the impact can be bad. And in addition to the previous ones, you can also break customer's workflow. So uh, you need some, uh, you need to do some solutions. So here you can do uh, change communication, you know, so the customer knows what's going to be released. Uh, you have versioning, uh, you use staging environments to prevent bugs. Uh, you make all your instances uniform, so there are no differences. Uh, you make regression tests, uh, you use version control, uh, backups, documentation. You need to do all those things to prevent bugs with maintenance. And bugs themselves, right? Defects in software. Uh, so a bug can cause anything, it, it, from downtime to incorrect behavior, uh, data corruption. So we engineers, we have a whole discipline about that. So software engineering, uh, we have quality assurance, there are books around that. We do code reviews, we write automated tests, uh, we write documentation, which helps prevent bugs. Uh, we write clean code. Uh, we use good system architecture because that prevents bugs. Also uh, using typed languages or uh, some kind of tools that can statically analyze what can go wrong, uh, helps fight bugs. Uh, and finally, it, um, in the big picture, it also helps if you track those bugs. Uh, that helps you fix them uh, more easily and helps to focus on the right bugs. So another huge area. So what else can go wrong? Well, last but not least, there's security. So uh, did you know that uh, Facebook has stored uh, passwords in plain text? apparently, that, that came out today. Uh, anyway, so this can cause huge damage to your organization. I mean, uh, besides technical problems, you can also face lo lawsuits, uh, loss of trust. So anyway, to fight these problems, we build secure systems. So uh, we implement authorization, we employ cryptography, uh, we probably do penetration testing, uh, we train our employees so they can uh, um, so they can code in a secure manner. Uh, we need to ensure physical security on, of our own, of our own environment. And finally, uh, even uh, some laws, regulations, or certifications they force us to have incident management systems. So, uh, right? So stability is very easy. You just need to do all those things, right? It's just very short list. Uh, uh, more probably than not, you are already doing most of these things. But if you fail to do basically any of these things, it usually means that there's some, there's some problem. So what do you do? I mean, all the solutions are there. How, how can we ensure stability? So let me give you an example of Igor. I play you a quick song. You might have heard I'm it. Igor Pachmielnik, Zakusol, and I'm an engineer. Just let me take my breakfast first, for flake, vodka, and beer. And hell, I'll show you all of mine, constructions everywhere. I can explain the world for you, all that I need is chair. I built many buildings, well, some of them have failed. I got to leave my country, so through the sea I sail. Trust me, I'm an engineer, I think we put this thing right here. Trust me, I'm an engineer, what the fuck did just happen here? Trust me, I'm an engineer, with epic scale and epic gear. Trust me, I'm an engineer, oh shit, I think I'm out of here. I build a lot of bridges, some of them even dance. My buildings are very secure, intruders have no chance. You want to drive a broken car? I can help you in this. No wheel, no tire, no problem. Those parts I never miss. I drive my tractor like a boss. See what jump I just did. 
You say this is impossible, just like I give a shit. Trust me, I'm an engineer. I think we put this thing right here. Trust me, I'm an engineer. What the fuck did just happen here? Trust me, I'm an engineer with epic skill and epic gear. Trust me, I'm an engineer. Oh shit, I think I'm out of here. Oh. Okay, I, I think you get the picture. So. Let me ask you a question. So, what is the one thing that Igor is missing to achieve stability? <laughs> right? Uh, so, my answer to this is uh, professionalism, right? Uh, so, he said a very good uh, rock bottom for what we should expect. On the opposite end, there's a professional. So, a professional is uh, attribute, his attributes are excellence, he's consistent, he's disciplined, he has responsibility, uh, he's very efficient, and he uses industry standards. So basically he has high bar in everything he does. And uh, if, your arg if your organization wants to be stable, basically the first thing that you need to, you, you need to want to be like this. You, you want to be a professional, you, you need to be like this. Uh, there's a great book, uh, Clean Coder, which I recommend, that, that's dedicated to this topic. Uh, but this is very general, right? It's, uh, it's not very actionable. Uh, so let's be a little more specific. So how, how can an organization achieve this professional, professionalism? How can it implement all those solutions properly? So the first problem is you have too many solutions to implement. Uh, so how do you become organized in a way that you can implement all of those solutions? And the solution to that is a great team. Uh, because you, you cannot do it alone. Nobody can do it alone. Nobody can be an expert in all of those things. Uh, and you need to embrace that diversity, that uh, team thinking. Uh, Stability is everyone's responsibility in some way. But all of those people, they need to specialize. So because every single solution needs to be, uh, needs to be professional, it, it needs to be really well made, and therefore it, it needs uh, care and attention to detail. Uh, so how do you manage that? Uh, basically, don't put your eggs in one basket. You, you don't put stability on one person's shoulder in your organization but uh, you properly divide. Uh, and you empower people to, uh, to contribute by themselves, to uh, contribute in their own way, because they know what needs to be done. Uh, so uh, then they can be excellent. Then they can uh, provide these great solutions. Uh, on the other hand, as a company, you need to keep your head up. So basically, you need to make sure that uh, the conversation about stability is live. Uh, basically, continuously review all the areas and basically identify like where we have problems and maybe we should put more people on on that particular topic. So basically, both maintain both bird eyes view and attention to detail. So that's first thing. Uh, so the second big problem is that uh, stability is continuous effort. Uh, basically, it takes a lot of discipline to maintain those solutions that you implement. Uh, because I'm sure all of you have seen it. Uh, for instance, you started doing code reviews, uh, and then you do it for two weeks, and then, then you stop because something happens. Uh, so it actually takes more than just implement a solution. You need to make it into a habit, and then maintain that habit you continuously. Uh, all right, doesn't make sense. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the couple of myths that are uh, around stability. So the first one that I see, uh, uh, I've seen in almost every company, you, you do the stability release. Uh, basically, you, you take a sprint off, you say, hey, we are not doing features we do a stability release this time. 
why it's not a great idea? It's because of those things I talked before. It's not habit building, right? You, it's just that special thing that you want time. That's, uh, that's not good. It also, usually it's very narrow. You, you, you focus on one, two, three things, but as a company you need to be broad, you need to do all of them. So uh, that's why it's wrong. Another thing why it's wrong, it sets wrong expectations around the company because you, you tell those uh, product managers, right, we are not focused on stability, so they, they, so they expect when the sprint is over, everything is stable, right? But that's bullshit because stability is not a state, it's a process, so uh, it sets wrong expectations. Uh, and then the next release usually, you have to redouble your effort on, on features, so no chance you can uh, focus on stability. Uh, one positive side of those things is that actually you can get uh, re-architecture done in such sprints, but uh, it shouldn't be the primary way to, to ensure stability. Better idea is to sort of adopt thinking like a stability tax, for instance. So uh, you subtract basically uh, your effort for each week and dedicate the, that uh, to, to stability and maintenance. And also, uh, a great way to achieving stability is just set high standards for, um, and I mean process standards, like, like um, you need proper code review, you need proper testing, and uh, these slow you down, but in that way you deliberately, deliberately slow yourself down. You deliberately put this stability tax on yourself so that your systems can be more stable and more sustainable in the long run. Okay, so this is one thing. Uh, another thing that's commonly uh, misunderstood is relationship between stability and agility, right? But if, if, if uh, you look at it properly, I mean, agility is definitely not chaos uh, or should not be. It's not HD, HD. Uh, so uh, in agile teams, you are free to decide which habits you want to keep. And uh, uh, in agile teams, you should innovate using iterations. So if you use very large pivots, then you are probably doing it wrong. If you, if you change your direction every, every few weeks. Uh, but if you use iteration, if you build on the shoulders of giants uh, and uh, actually uh, use those things that you've implemented previously, uh, then you can slowly iterate towards very stable system, very stable organization. So, uh, and that even happens for, that even works for choosing solutions, right? Uh, when adopting a new strategy, you should do one of two things. You should choose something that worked well for you before, or you should look uh, what works well elsewhere. All right. So, uh, that was a very short uh, uh, overview of what the stability could look like. So, let me recap uh, in a very few points. So, uh, first I talked about stability matters more as, as the company matures. Uh, it's not so important in the beginning. Uh, then, we sh then I showed you many problems that you will face. Uh, and uh, a variety of known solutions to those problems. But the thing is, there are too many of them. And uh, to, to solve them as an organization, uh, you need to be a team of uh, diverse professionals uh, and focus on sustainable habits uh, to keep that professionality going. And finally, uh, the best way is to focus on iteration uh, rather than pivoting and complete re-architectures. So that's it for that's it from me. I'm I'm looking forward to your questions and also to uh, to any discussions we might have after the talk or offline. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Uh, the question with the most upvotes, where is your hockey stick? Whatever that means. Uh, you mean our companies? I don't know who asked the question. Uh, let's say that maybe someone asked about uh, where do you experience the biggest growth? 
Yeah, so this is what it meant. So there's the hockey stick of Facebook. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't bring uh, our company's results with me, but uh, I'm sure someone from our company could provide you with, with a nice graph like this. Okay, uh, another one. Exponea has a lot of junior, uh, even though excellent, team members. Is seniority, seniority overrated? What are your strategies to bring new people to the A level and beyond? Kind of a big question, but uh, I mean, seniority is definitely not overrated, but also, but growth is also important. So, uh, and uh, unleashing people's potential is is important, and we definitely uh, do a lot of that. What kind of training in security do you do for employees, in house, or do you advise on courses? and our books? Uh, we specifically do all of those things, I'd say. Uh, we have some initiatives by our, our own uh, SecOps department. Uh, and we also expect uh, everyone to do um, do, their, do courses on their own or, um, or basically read books. Mm -hmm. I think not deploying on Fridays is a symptom of bad code, bad tests, or lack of trust. There's no question, but if you maybe you'd like to comment on that. Um, sorry, can you repeat it? I, uh -huh. I think not deploying on Fridays is a symptom of bad code, bad tests, or lack of trust. Any comments on that? I don't know. I, I wouldn't say that. Uh, I mean, usually it's a symptom of just, you know, I. You want to uh, have all your things finished by the end of the week. I, I think that's uh, th that's the primary reason be behind Friday deployments. I mean, and you just have to be disciplined enough not to do it. Okay. What do you think is the single most or or, or the single biggest challenge in stabilizing Exponia? I think it's uh, the, the the conditions are always changing. I mean, because as you are in the middle of the hockey stick, I mean, um, you might kind of fall in the trap of solving yesterday's uh, scaling problem. That uh, you are solving a problem that you had with, with in your current phase, and then then you then half a year later you are in the next phase. So I think that's. And there was our last question. Thank you very much, Philip. Thank you.